For decades, Neanderthals were portrayed as primitive brutes, a failed experiment in human evolution. But modern science is revealing a far more complex and intimate truth. According to experts, Homo neanderthalensis, often classified as Homo sapiens neanderthalensis, diverged from modern human lineages less than 500,000 years ago and disappeared from Europe and Asia around 40,000 years ago. Today, many researchers recognize Neanderthals and modern humans as closely related subspecies, not separate species. In fact, the blood that once flowed through Neanderthals was far more similar to ours than previously believed. Recent genetic discoveries have shown that Neanderthals possess the full range of modern human blood types. The remains of several Neanderthal women, found in Siberia, Croatia and nearby regions, reveal blood types A and B, overturning the long-held assumption that all Neanderthals were type O. Even more surprising, they carried a rare RH factor once thought to exist only in a small population of modern humans. This tells us that Neanderthals and modern humans shared ancient biological traits long before their final encounters. Yet these similarities may also have carried risks. Interbreeding between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens likely caused complications, including conditions that could threaten newborn survival. Combined with the intense physical demands placed on Neanderthal mothers, who raised fast-growing large-brained infants requiring high-calorie diets, reproduction may have been costly and limited. Despite this, the two populations did meet. And when they did, they didn't simply compete, they connected. Genetic evidence shows extensive gene flow between Neanderthals and early modern humans. Over time, Neanderthal Y chromosomes disappeared, replaced by those of Homo sapiens, while traces of Neanderthal DNA persist in nearly all non-African humans alive today. These exchanges likely occur during warmer periods between 270,000 and 100,000 years ago, when migration and contact were more common. Anthropologists suggest these interactions were not always romantic, but cultural. In many ancient societies, women moved between groups to forge alliances, a practice known as patrilocality. DNA evidence suggests this may have been true for Neanderthals as well. Imagine a moment like this. Two groups meeting in a mist-covered forest 40,000 years ago. Firelight flickers, food is shared, gestures replace words, curiosity overcomes fear. In these brief moments, boundaries blurred, not just between cultures, but between species. Children born from these unions carried the strength of both worlds, shaping the future of humanity. But Neanderthals were also victims of forces beyond their control. Around 40,000 years ago, massive volcanic eruptions across Europe and the Caucasus Mountains devastated ecosystems. Ash choked the land, plants vanished. Large mammals declined. Even a species as resilient as the Neanderthals could not easily recover from such rapid, catastrophic changes. For much of the last century, Neanderthals were misunderstood, imagined as hunched, speechless and savage. Modern reconstructions now prove otherwise. They stood fully upright, crafted tools, lived in social groups and survived multiple ice ages. Neanderthals were not monsters, they were not failures. They were human, and though their species vanished, they never truly disappeared. They live on, in our DNA, our history, and in the unanswered questions that still surround our shared past. As research advances, the story of Neanderthals becomes less about extinction and more about transformation. They were not simply replaced by modern humans. They were absorbed, reshaped, and woven into the fabric of our species. Every fragment of DNA recovered from ancient bones tells a story of contact, adaptation, and survival in an unforgiving world. Neanderthals understood their environments deeply. They crafted complex stone tools, controlled fire, hunted cooperatively, and cared for injured members of their groups. Evidence suggests they buried their dead and may have used pigments and personal ornaments, hinting at symbolic thought and social identity. These were not creatures driven solely by instinct, but communities bound by knowledge, 
memory and tradition. Their physical strength was remarkable, yet it came at a cost. Neanderthals required more energy to survive than modern humans. In times of environmental stability, this was manageable. But during periods of sudden climate shifts, when temperatures dropped, food sources vanished, and landscapes changed within a single lifetime, even their resilience had limits. Meanwhile, Homo sapiens brought something different. Not necessarily greater intelligence, but greater flexibility. Wider social networks, faster innovation, and long-distance alliances allowed modern humans to adapt more quickly to change. When conditions worsened, sapiens could move, trade, and reorganize in ways Neanderthal groups could not always match. And yet, when these two worlds met, they didn't just clash, they learned from one another. Tools improved, techniques spread. Genes crossed boundaries that nature itself had drawn. The line between us and them became increasingly blurred. By the time the last Neanderthal groups vanished, they were no longer entirely separate from us. Their legacy lived on in skin tones, immune responses, and subtle traits carried by billions of people today. In a very real sense, Neanderthals never fully disappeared. They became part of who we are. Perhaps the most fascinating truth is this. If you could meet a Neanderthal face to face, you wouldn't be looking at a stranger. You would be looking at a cousin, a reflection of a path humanity could have taken, and in many ways still did. So what do you think happened in those moments of first contact? Were these encounters driven by survival, curiosity, or something deeper? Did Neanderthals fade away, or were they simply transformed? Leave a comment below and share your thoughts. Your perspective helps keep the conversation and the mystery alive. And if you enjoyed this journey into our shared past, don't forget to subscribe, share, and explore more stories hidden in human history. As the last Neanderthal groups faded from the archaeological record, their world was already changing faster than any generation before them had experienced. Landscapes they had known for tens of thousands of years were transformed by advancing glaciers, volcanic winters, and collapsing food chains. Survival was no longer about strength alone, but about speed, speed of movement, speed of adaptation, speed of cooperation across vast distances. Small isolated Neanderthal communities became increasingly vulnerable. Limited population sizes meant fewer mates, reduced genetic diversity, and little room for recovery after catastrophe. Modern humans, by contrast, expanded their networks, exchanging tools, ideas, and resources across hundreds of kilometers. In a rapidly shifting world, connection became an evolutionary advantage. Yet even as Neanderthals vanished as a distinct population, their influence endured. Traits that once helped them survive Ice Age Europe, cold tolerance, robust immune responses, and physical resilience, persist today in many modern human populations. These inherited fragments are silent witnesses to ancient encounters that shaped the course of our species. What remains most striking is how close we came to sharing the planet as equals. For thousands of years, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens walked the same valleys, hunted the same animals, and gazed at the same stars. Their story is not one of inferiority, but of circumstance. A reminder that evolution does not reward perfection, only survival in a given moment. Today, as we reconstruct their faces, decode their DNA, and uncover their campsites, Neanderthals challenge us to rethink what it truly means to be human. Intelligence, culture, emotion, and connection did not begin with us. They were inherited from a deeper, shared past. And perhaps the most haunting thought of all is this. If history had turned out just a little differently, it might not be us studying Neanderthals, but Neanderthals studying us. So now we ask you, do you believe Neanderthals were doomed by nature or lost to chance? Were their encounters with modern humans acts of survival, cooperation, or something more personal? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this exploration into humanity's deep past, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, 
and share it with anyone curious about where we truly come from. Thank you for watching, and as always, stay curious.